All right, we are live. Welcome to you just joining and welcome to all of the replay viewers. My name is Dr. Joe McCullough. I'm the physics program chair at Cabrillo College in Santa Cruz, California. And today we're going to talk a little bit about mirrors and I'm going to show you the explanation of yesterday's cool floating light bulb demonstration. Before I do, let me just say hi to all the people joining. Ape Cross, welcome. Let me turn this around and say hello. Welcome to those joining. I'm going to show you a pretty cool demonstration today with three different kinds of mirrors. I'm going to show you a plain mirror, a concave, and a convex mirror. Welcome, Ayulo. Ayula. Hi. Hi, Ape Cross. Hey, fine woman. Welcome. I really enjoyed your scope yesterday. Congratulations on 200 scopes. That is awesome. Let me turn this around. If anybody's not watching Fine Woman and likes physics, I don't. So yesterday I was showing you this floating, you're very welcome, floating light demo. So what I have here is really just a cool physics application using a concave mirror. One, let me just show you that this is an illusion. I cannot grab the light bulb. I can pass my hand right through it. What's going on? Well, I showed you the setup, and let me show you it again. It's a pretty neat little setup. So what we have is a black box where I've got just a light bulb base. Inside, we have a light bulb, which is upside down. The reason it has to be upside down is because concave mirrors, when they produce a real image, that real image is always inverted. And then what we have is a concave mirror. Now I set up this whole system so that the real image is about at the location of the base. It's really hard to set this up by yourself, but there really is a real image there. If I put a piece of paper, oh, it's not great, but there's an image there. That's where the light is meeting. Funny physics. Okay, let me show you something cool. All right, so I have now three mirrors set up. I have a plain mirror, and this is the kind of mirror that you have in your bathrooms. It's just a flat mirror. I've got a concave mirror, and this can produce different kinds of images. It can produce real and virtual, both upright and inverted, and, and con I'm sorry, I'm trying to read that. Can you show the concave mirror on the side maybe? Yes, great idea. This is a convex mirror. So the convex mirror, it is convex outwards, concave mirror. I'm gonna show you from the side, concave inwards. Plain mirror is flat. Thing about plain mirrors, it can only produce one kind of image. That image is always a virtual image. It's always the same size as the object, and it's always as far behind the mirror as you are in front of it. Concave mirror is by far the coolest. So let me back up. So right now you're seeing me upside down. If I move forward, at one point, let me see if I can get this right. It's kind of cool once I back up a bit. Watch my head. Gotta get this just right. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Then it flips upside down. One more time going forwards. Oof. Really hard getting this camera right. Backing up. Head blown up. Uh, and then convex mirror only produces virtual images. It's always smaller than the object. Now, the reason that you always see objects in mirror are closer than they appear is because your rear view mirror, sorry, your side view mirror is a convex mirror. Convex mirrors always makes images smaller and our brain interprets smaller as farther away. So again, the concave one is by far the coolest. Can't get this just right. So right now I'm inside the focal point as I back up. Can't get this just right. There we go. Watch my face blow up. Uh, and now I'm upside down. 
All right, so for those of you who want to geek out just for five minutes, I'm going to give you a little bit more detailed explanation. I don't want to zoomed in. Okay, so what I'm really explaining here is called the ray model of light. In this model, it's not exactly how light works, but light reflects off of an object in many different directions. It's called diffuse reflection. Some of those light rays enter our eye, and that's how we see the object. And since it's diffuse reflection, the light is reflected in many different directions. I can see the object from here, 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 and so on. Now, plane mirrors, a flat mirror, always produces a virtual image. And a virtual image is one that kind of just is inside your brain. It's how your brain interprets the light. So in this case, you've got light coming from the bottle, hitting the mirror, and then obeying the law of reflection. Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. That light reflects back. Your brain doesn't know that light reflects. So what it does is it sees these light rays, and to your brain, it looks like they came from a point behind the mirror. That's where your brain sees the image. Now that's different from a real image, but I'll get to in a second. Excuse me. This is also why objects underwater are always deeper than they appear not because of reflection, but of something called refraction. So as light is going from one interface to another, like from water to air, air to water, glass to air, things like that, that light can bend. So light coming up from the chest bends once it goes from water to air. We just see these two light rays. Our brain doesn't know that light bent. It always assumes light traveled in a straight line. So to your brain, this is where the image appears to be. Now, this is also what happens in your mirror. You have some object which is either emitting its own light, like a flashlight or reflecting light from around it. That light hits the mirror. You see the reflected light rays. And to your brain, it looks as if it came from an object behind the mirror. That's called a virtual image. There's not really an object there, but it just looks that way. Now, a real image. For a real image, the light actually reflects off the mirror and meets at a point. That point is called the image point. And in this case, for parallel light rays, they're gonna meet at the focal point. Now, a concave mirror can produce different kinds of images. It can produce a virtual image, excuse me, a virtual image. If the object is in front of the focal point, that virtual image is going to be enlarged. So makeup mirrors, where you see yourself enlarged, it's always a concave mirror, and you're looking at yourself inside the focal point. Now, if you're between the focal point and a point called the center of curvature, it's gonna produce a real image. That real image is going to be flipped upside down, and it's going to be larger. And then finally, if you're beyond the center of curvature, you're going to create a real image. Again, it's gonna be flipped, but this time it's going to be smaller. So in this setup, I've got a light bulb I've got a concave mirror, <clears throat> and the light bulb is beyond this focal point of the mirror. And I have this set up so that it's creating a real image of the light bulb right next to the light bulb base. Pretty cool physics. Really is light meeting here. I just cannot grab it. Okay, I have to go. Actually, I didn't mean to go this long. But let me just show you one more time. A, plane mirror, a flat mirror, only produces one kind of image. It's always virtual. The image always appears as far behind the mirror as you are in front of it. So if you're two feet in front of the mirror, your image appears two feet behind. A, convex mirror. Convex mirror only produces one kind of image. It's always a virtual image and it's always smaller. This is why objects in mirrors are closer than they appear for your side view mirror. And last but not least, I've got a concave mirror. Right now it's producing a real image and that real image is reduced in size. As I get closer, the image is gonna increase in size. And then at one point, now it's gonna flip upside down and now it is a virtual image. I get closer and I watch as I start to back up. Oh. <laughs>
it for today. I have to go to a doctor's appointment. Thank you for all of you joining me. My name is Dr. Joe McCullough. I'm the physics program chair at Cabrillo College in Santa Cruz, California, and I'm on Periscope every day for a year. I think this is day 37. Thank you very much for joining, and uh, it's the weekend. I'm not sure what I'm going to be scoping about, but next week I'm going to be talking about the brain, what we know about how people process, store, and retrieve information. And I'll tell you students how you can use that information to learn faster, teachers how you can use that information to make sure your students remember your content. Wow, look at me sweating. It is hot in here. <laughs> Have you been to the Explorerium? Yes, I love the Exploratorium. If you haven't checked that out, definitely do. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for checking me out. If you've enjoyed this, please follow and share with other people. Oh, they do have a concave mirror exhibit. Great. Thank you so much, and I will see you tomorrow. You are welcome. Fine woman. Check her out, too. I can't wait to start checking out your scopes. Unfortunately, it's not a good time for me, but I will check out your replays and have a great 201st episode. All right, signing out for today.